Question from It's Jasmine. How did you get the Inaman, if you don't mind me asking? Also, I just made my boyfriend buy me one. This question from Faye. Long time viewer, by the way, Faye. We appreciate it. I'm curious about Pirate Ship. Maybe you can answer my question here on another video. Is Pirate Ship listed as an option on eBay or separate? If separate, do you print the label from their site? So the answer is it's separate. And yes, you print the label from their site, but you can import everything into their site very easily. You j Trust me, if I can do it, it's easy. And you just import your eBay sales for that day and find the one that you're trying to do through Pirate Ship. And the process is really actually pretty easy. I would suggest investing a little bit of time in it, maybe an hour or so of your life and really figuring it out and knowing what to do with it. And an hour might be more than you need to do, to be honest with you. It really is pretty easy and it has saved me a bunch of money. All right, Vintage Zookeeper. Do you ever have people ask for the difference in shipping refunded to them? Example, when you charge calculated shipping and then use Pirate Ship. So I'm going to say the short answer to this is no. I'm not going to say never. Occasionally, once in a blue moon, somebody might ask for some kind of shipping discount, but they usually do that before they buy, and they should do that before they buy. You know, I'm going to a little bit of an extra step to ship it via pirate ship to save a few bucks. Um, I'm not going to refund that. The time and effort involved in refunding that would kind of negate the whole process to begin with. Now, if it was outrageous, you know, the difference, if I'm saving, you know, $10 or something, then yeah, I might go in. But if it's a $3 difference, I'm not going to go in and do a refund. Maybe if they ask for it, I might. But the reality is that shipping costs are all relative. Everybody pays a flat amount and they're basically agreeing to it when they purchase the item. Now, I will go back and refund things when people buy multiple items and are paying for shipping for both items and I'm shipping it in one box. Now that is something I definitely do, but uh, I might do it for um, certain cases when, when it really does save a bunch of money. But other than that, you know, I'm not going to go back and refund because you got to pay fees on those shipping costs as well. So at any rate, if I'm wrong about that, y'all can uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. All right, here's a different sort of question from Lisa and Todd at Gracie's Bookshop. Way to go, 10,000 subs, nice milestone, a lot of time and hard work. And skip down to question four there. It says, question for you, Kevin. Can you estimate the total number of hours of YouTube work to get to 10,000 subscribers? Thanks for the great info you provide. Well, I just kind of looked back and did some averages in my mind when I saw your question because I've been doing this for around 300 days. And if you include everything that's YouTube related, I mean, it could be 1,500 hours. I mean, it is a lot. Now, a lot of that I would do anyways because I do eBay. So let's just say it's 1,000 hours. And that's a low estimate in my opinion. You know, to, to do a 15-minute normal what sold video for me is it could be an hour and a half process. It just depends on what I'm doing to edit the video and what we're doing to prepare for it. So... It's a lot of time, and so a lot of people start their YouTube channels and they, they quit because they realize that they're losing money doing it because of all the time they could be listing. So, I don't know. I hate to give people false hope on eBay. It is work. It's not just magic, and YouTube is the same way. So, thanks so much for that question, and hopefully I answered it for you. I appreciate it. From a video I did about how to get your store coupon if you have an eBay store for your eBay branded shipping materials. And he says, if I open a store today in the middle end of a quarter, do I still get the coupon? Or do I have to wait for the new quarter to begin to get the coupon? I'm pretty certain, I'm 99% certain that you have to wait for that coupon. I think it's issued at the beginning of each quarter. And I am not 100% positive of that, but I vaguely remember having that same question, and I'm pretty sure you have to wait. So let me know if anybody knows different out there, but I think that's the right answer. Question from It's Jasmine. How did you get the Inaman, if you don't mind me asking? Also, I just made my boyfriend buy me one. 
So I've sold these over the years. I occasionally see, you know, a single or maybe a few at a garage sale and I'll pick them up and I'll sell them and make a, a few bucks off of them. Nothing big. There's also some Christmas ornament ones that I bought years ago for, I can't remember what I paid, probably close to a dollar a piece. And I was selling them for like 10 bucks a piece. There was like 30 in there. And so that was really nice on one listing. And so I saw them at a local antique shop and I tried to work a deal. They were selling them for two bucks a piece and ended up finding out that they had a lot more. And so I bought a couple hundred and I'm like, you know what? I have a feeling that these things are gonna sell because we were selling a few to viewers every now and again and the channel was growing and I'm like, well, let's go back and buy 1,500 more. <laughs> and that's what we did. And they're about half gone at this point. So thanks so much for the question. Do you always do immediate pay? I've had a few issues lately with buyers taking their sweet time to pay. Drives me nuts. Well, the short answer is yes, I always do immediate pay. There are some circumstances where you can't. If you send an offer to somebody, if they send an offer to you, if it's a best offer item, and obviously for items that are done with auction. Um, but other than that, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time I do immediate pay. I don't know if that's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do, but it's the thing I do because I don't want to deal with a lot of the issues. And also, you know, if it's something that you need to go do and you need to put your store on vacation for a couple of days and you have that item out there floating out there that hasn't been paid for, it's an inconvenience. So I do immediate pay. I'm curious to know how many of you out there do. So in the comments, let me know if you do immediate pay or if you don't and give me the rationale for it. Thanks for the question. All right, this isn't a question, but I think it's awesome, so I just thought I'd show it to you. I list some stuff from my car all the time. I have a 12 by 12 box with a white background that I place uh, the item inside and use the sun for lighting. It works perfect, so that is awesome. I have often listed things. I, I just do it for fun sometimes. I'll buy something at the Goodwill, and I'll put it on the back of my car, and I'll snap a picture and see if I can sell it before I get home. So awesome, Shane. Thank you. All right, here's a question from one of our favorite viewers, Red Cardinal Treasures. Do you exclude any countries on selling internationally? So presently I don't. I'm sure I'm going to get burned. I should probably check on... I know there's a few countries out there that you're really suggested not to, but I haven't yet, and I probably won't until I get burned on it. So let me know what you do. All right, here's a question from Vinny. So I have a question about immediate pay. What exactly does that mean? I always click immediate pay. And I would have thought that it would have meant that if a person bought it, that it immediately would take the money from pay, from the PayPal account, which it does not. Uh, so what does immediate pay mean? Or what does it mean? Does it mean anything? Uh, actually, it does mean exactly what it says. It means immediate pay. So if they buy the item, they have to pay immediately. So I think what's going on here is you see some items that don't get paid for and you think, well, it must not be immediate pay then. Well, there are a couple circumstances where there is not an immediate pay, three exactly. So if you have an auction, you can't do immediate pay, but that's obvious and you can't even click it. The other two are if you do best offer and they um, ask for an offer and you send it to them. Those are the other two situations. So if you have it set at best offer, and then you respond to them and accept their offer, or if they ask you and then you send them an offer. Those two cases, they're not going to be immediate pay, but I have never had any other circumstance where it wasn't immediate pay. So hopefully that helps, Vinny. I appreciate it. Sherry says, do you know any eBay sellers on YouTube who sell from Canada? So there are a few. The one that comes to my mind right off the bat is Thrift Beast CQ. Tell them I sent you. All right, Jim says, can you show us how you would ship a golf bag? So I would show you, but it's kind of boring. So what you need to do is find a box that a golf bag goes in. <laughs> so find a golf shop somewhere. Go to, you know, your local golf shop and ask them. They'll be happy to give you some of the boxes that they get the bags in. So that's how I do it. It's a question about bobbleheads. How heavy are the bobbleheads and how do you ship them? So they're different weights. There are some bobbleheads I have actually shipped first class. The vast majority of them are going to be over a pound once they're packaged up and I usually ship them out in a priority mail shoebox is usually how I do it. But I do have those uh, eight by six by fours and some fit in there. 
and sometimes I take a five by five by five and I double it up. So I make it a little longer than it is and I kind of Frankenbox them together. So hope that helps. All right, here's a non-eBay question. Being a history teacher, what states use the term Commonwealth in their title? I live in Massachusetts and we are a Commonwealth. Well, I know Kentucky is and I know Virginia is and I believe Pennsylvania is the other one. But I'm going to have to check that out. But I'm 90% sure I'm right on that one.